That's why. Red dot. Mammal. Red dot. Mammal. Back. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones, and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. This is my first video in 2020. I hope you had a great new year and this week I just wanted to kick us off strong with something that goes along with one of my favorite writing projects. So when I taught first grade we would always start our all about books during January. After the holiday break it was kind of a great time to dive into about a month long unit where students would pick an animal, they would research all about it and get to actually share and publish their own book about an animal of their choice. Over in my SJT Writing Club, that is our focus this month. So since that's been on my mind, I wanted to go ahead and share five of my favorite websites for students to research animals. Now, even if you aren't diving into a big month-long writing unit like my students were this time of year, these sites are still great for students to go on, research about a topic, which is one of the standards, and then come back and write maybe a couple informative paragraphs about what they've learned. As I share each of the five sites, I will go ahead and insert a little clip of what the sites kind of look like as students can roam through it so you can see if it would work for you and your students. Let's go. The first one I want to go ahead and share about is called Pebble Go. It is a big database for kids and it is a lot of fun. It's very interactive, but you do need a login for this one. So I learned about this from my first school. My librarian had actually gotten us a login and account for it. And students can actually go ahead and research different animals, science topics, some social studies topics. It was just a really cool site. I do believe there is a free trial option, so go ahead and check it out. But let me show you what it looks like. So here on PebbleGo, you can see that there are animals, science, biographies, and social studies. So while I love this for animals, there are plenty of other things that students can research on here. It is a huge database, so they can go ahead and click on any animal they want to, and they will be able to see all sorts of different fun things like their body and where they live and some fun facts about each of these animals. What I also love about this database is that you can go ahead and click on the speaker and it will actually read the text for your students so it's accessible to all your kids. The next one is a popular one and that is National Geographic for Kids. So when I do this writing project, I like to gather a ton of books about the animals that we're going to be researching. And one of my favorite ways to do that is with the National Geographic, the early readers, because oftentimes they will have the same topic, let's say cheetahs, for instance, in like the pre-reader category for my students who are doing simple sentences and really just looking at the photographs. And they will also have maybe a level two or a level three or a level one that is just a little bit higher. Each level, of course, get the text is a little more difficult, but it's great to help differentiate for my students' needs when they're all researching some of the same animals. So along with the books, I love having students go on and read about the different animals on the website. They have stunning photographs, really cool videos that students can look through. And if there's a specific fact that they might be looking for during their project, they can go ahead and try to find it on this website. The next website for students to use is the San Diego Zoo for Kids website. All these websites I'm gonna have linked down below so you can check them out. But I love this one because it is very visually appealing and students can quickly go ahead and click on an animal they wanna learn about. They'll see a little map about where the animal lives and its habitat. They can see what it eats and they can see its endangered uh, status really easily. Another cool thing about this actual website is that if the San Diego Zoo has that animal, at, the, at their zoo, you can actually click and watch a little live cam and see what those animals are doing. The next website I discovered is called Ranger Rick Jr. or Ranger Rick for Kids, something like that. And it goes with the National Wildlife Federation. It's kind of the kids, Ranger Rick is a raccoon, I believe. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But I think he's a raccoon. And he is kind of like the mascot for kids learning about wildlife and things like that. So when you go onto their website, it is really cool. They actually have a magazine as well, but when you go on their website, you can click the different animals and basically like a PDF pops up, but it pops up like an image so you don't have to download it or anything. And students can go ahead and read through kind of like a virtual magazine right on their screen. 
They also have a pretty good video section where you can watch real penguins waddling, you can listen to the sounds of different birds, and things like that. The last one I have to share with you today is Wild Kratts on PBS. And this is actually a TV show that my boys, Theo and Calvin, love. The uh, Krat Brothers, I think they are, I don't know their names, but the Krat Brothers, they teach you all about these different animals, and on the show they go ahead and share what the live animal looks like, and them interacting with those animals, and they teach kids really fun facts about all sorts of wildlife. But on the line, on the website that I'm sharing, they have what they call the Creaturepedia. And like some of the other websites, they can go ahead and click on different groups of animals they want to learn about, the different habitats that animals live in, and they just learn a lot of fun information about these animals. I wanted to go ahead and share these five websites with you in case this was something your students were interested in. I love this type of reading and writing project where students are really just immersed in all sorts of nonfiction books and nonfiction articles and websites. It's kind of integrating technology along with their learning, and then they get to go ahead, process what they've learned, and share it through writing with other students. It is truly one of my favorite writing projects to do throughout the year, and honestly, even if you're not doing a writing project, these five websites are great kid-friendly ones that you can go ahead and add to your students' kind of choice board if they go to technology. So if they have access to iPads or computers or whatever you have in your classroom, these websites are great ones for them to kind of explore safely on and learn some cool nonfiction facts. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, if you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will go ahead and answer them. And until next week, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you always get notified of my videos. See you next Sunday. Bye. I wanted to go ahead and...